Yo, these are the products I have on me daily, nothing more, nothing less. The iPhone 15 Pro launched last week and adding it to my everyday carry was an absolute must. I have it in the natural titanium finish, which I think is the best looking model this year. I'm a big fan of the titanium chassis. It feels incredible in the hand and is significantly lighter than the last two models. Picking up my 13 Pro after just a few days, it already feels like a brick. The texture of the phone feels really nice, but it is a little slippery. I'm going caseless for now just because I haven't come across a leather one I like, but it does keep me on edge. What I do appreciate though is fingerprints are much less noticeable on the sides, which keeps the phone looking clean. I'm really liking the new action button. I didn't think I would at first, but I'm going between using it as just the ringer and having it be a dedicated tweet button. Now that it has USB-C, all I really need to bring with me is one cable and every device I have can be charged. This really helps to keep what I carry pretty minimal. Other than that though, this year wasn't much of an upgrade. The Apple Store was super busy on launch day, so I think USB-C really did it for a lot of people, but even coming from the 13 Pro, in day-to-day -day use, it's essentially the same. We'll see how much my opinion changes by the end of next month, so if you're enjoying the video, make sure you're subscribed. On my wrist at all times is the Orient Kamasu. I did a ton of research on the best quality watches, and Orient kept coming up as one of the best values for money. If you love the Rolex of Mariner but don't have the budget for one, 240 bucks is all this will cost you on Amazon. There is no doubt that this is my favorite purchase of the last year. The 41.8 millimeter stainless steel case fits nicely on my wrist, and at 150 grams, is an incredibly lightweight watch. It's very comfortable, and I really only feel it when it's not there. It's fully waterproof up to 220 meters, which as a daily watch is great as I never have to worry about getting it wet. The black watch face on the silver band is sleek and matches with essentially whatever I have on. I've banged this around quite a bit, so on the bracelet you can see some scratches, but I've been surprised with just how well the glass is held up. I occasionally need to clean it off for fingerprints, but that's it. My only complaint with the watch is that with its 40 hour power reserve, I find myself constantly having to readjust the time every day or two, which can become a bit annoying. I've never been able to find a wallet that I really like, but after seeing Andres Vidoza feature this coach zip card one, I had to grab it. Design-wise, it's exactly what I was looking for, all black leather in a slim profile, able to hold four cards. There's also room in the front compartment for two or three more, just note it does make it a little harder to pull out the other four. In the zipper compartment, you can store whatever else you want, but it's most useful if you have a little bit of cash or an air tag. Now this here from Buck Knives is what I've been using to open most of my boxes these days, the 254 Odessa. I was getting bored of my old knife and wanted something that looked a little cleaner, and I came across this one. I bought it before I even saw the natural titanium of the iPhone 15 Pro, and the two are literally an EDC match made in heaven. The blade is super sharp and makes opening up anything such a joy. When you flick it open, it only goes halfway, which is annoying, but for $30, I can't complain too much. If you're looking for a nice EDC knife on a budget, this is the one I'd go for. Back to the blacked out aesthetic, I'm using one of OrbiKey's organizers to tidy up my most used keys. I also have a Chipolo Bluetooth tracker on there, which has a much slimmer profile than an AirTag. It works effectively the same, it's just not quite as useful if I lose it somewhere in my house, as you don't have access to find mine. Leather is the only option as this material looks and feels so damn good. You can never go wrong with black on black, so I swapped out my old one for this black stitching. That one held up pretty well after about a year of use, but it did soften down and lose a lot of its texture. One of the only other issues I had was the screw lock did tend to loosen up over time. That kind of defeats the purpose, so just make sure to adjust it if it starts to get loose. Whenever I leave the house, the AirPods Pro 2 have to come along with me. Simply the convenience for me is why I love them so much. I still have the lightning case, which is a bummer, but most of the time I charge a wireless sleep, so it's not that big of a deal. With the reverse charging of the new iPhones, if you have a lightning cable on you, they can actually charge them up. AirPods battery life though are pretty good, so if I do forget to charge them one day, it's not that much of an issue. I find the upgraded ones incredibly comfortable, a lot more so than the original pros. When I'm at school, noise cancelling is an absolute godsend. I love to listen to audiobooks or podcasts when I'm going between classes. The Find My support also gives me so much peace of mind that if I were to leave them somewhere, they'd be easy to get back. I'm probably the most boring iPad Pro user you'll ever find on YouTube. YouTube, literally all I use this for is good notes. I take handwritten notes in class, I just find that much more convenient than typing because I can download a PDF of the slides and annotate them. And then for these videos, I'll draw out thumbnails and use it to organize b-roll shots, but that's it. I never consume content, play with any pro apps, or anything like that. I'll occasionally edit a photo in Lightroom, but that's the most use I ever get out of this. I'll never use a lower tier iPad though until they all have promotion. 
writing and scrolling around on here just feels too damn good. I love the case I have on it. This is the Mag Easy Folio 2 from Pitica. It's incredibly lightweight and slim, but still keeps the iPad protected. It's not real leather, but it has a close enough look and feel that I don't mind it. The magnets are the best feature of the case by far though. When closed up, the pencil is kept in place and you can prop the iPad safely without worrying it'll tip. The stand allows you to use it both in portrait and landscape, which is really nice to have. But when at its lowest tilt, it isn't super stable, so I do tend to write on it completely flat. Whether I'm away or at the desk, the 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook is the perfect machine. Honestly, my only regret is going for the 16 gigabyte model. Even with just a few apps running at a time, my memory usage spikes abnormally high. I do plan to pick up a MacBook Air in the near future, just because lugging this 16 inch laptop back and forth is a little obnoxious. I do enjoy having screen real estate, but being able to comfortably lap it in small spaces would be really nice. Other than that though, the display is gorgeous still to this day. The colors are vibrant and really pop, plus the 120 hertz Pro Motion makes movements feel so fluid. More importantly though, the power this delivers allows me to run this entire creator business from a single machine. Even having my 4080 PC build, I still turn to this for everything besides gaming. Editing in DaVinci Resolve is an absolute joy, render times are quick, and I've never experienced any lag even on my 4K timeline. Now, because shooting in 4K does take up so much storage, I do need an external SSD. In my gaming accessories video, I talked about this ROG enclosure, but I've been thinking that instead of using that 4 terabyte SSD I have inside for games, I had instead loaded up with all of my footage and photos. Being able to take advantage of the insane speeds this drive has makes it a great product to have. The enclosure is super compact and it can easily be thrown in a bag. I'm just not a fan of the RGB logo that can't be configured unless it's plugged into a Windows PC. All of these items I throw into my backpack from TomTalk. It's sleek and has the perfect amount of storage for what I need. There's a sleeve with a soft padded section for a laptop and an iPad in front. It fits both the 11 inch iPad Pro and 16 inch MacBook no problem and it's super easy to grab each of them out. The main compartment has a fleece pocket at the front and then one more sleeve at the back that's great to put a book or binder. In the front two pockets I keep any miscellaneous cable and power bricks I have and then store pencils when I need them. I'm not too organized with my bag to be honest but it does the job. Even fully packed it remains slim and comfortably holds all of my EDC items. I hope you discovered a new piece of tech and if so let me know which was your favorite. 98% of you who watch this channel regularly are not subscribed so if you enjoyed today's video let's help bring that number down to 50. Next week, I am moving into a new apartment where I have a dedicated office space. It's gonna be a really big upgrade from what I have now, but to say the least, crazy shit is in the works. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next week. Take care.